Hey everyone, with this video let me show you how you can create the Orton Glow effect in Lightroom. So no Photoshop needed, if you want to follow along this tutorial you can find the raw file following the link in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. For this video we are working with an HDR image, that means we do have a lot more dynamic range and thus we can safely bring down the highlights, increase the shadows and just get a probably balanced exposure. For the Orton Glow effect, as always, you want to start in the basic tab. And the first step to achieving this look is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This is very important since Adobe Standard, as you can see, lessens the contrast. And for that Orton Glow effect, less contrast is actually very, very helpful, as you will see in a minute. Now, before we start working further on the exposure, I also want to quickly adjust the white balance. I do want this shot to be a lot colder, so let's bring down the temperature, just like that. What I want to do next is to get the exposure right. I do want to brighten up everything, so I'm going to raise the exposure. Let me make that panel a little bigger so the sliders will be a little more precise. So I want to go with something like this. And of course, raising the exposure will reduce the details in the sky since this area is super bright. I don't want that, so what I can do here is to simply pull down the highlights. And just like that, we do see all the detail in the fog up there, which is super nice. Then let's introduce the Orton Glow base. I want to bring up the shadows, and as I said, reduced contrast is very helpful for the Orton Glow effect. Bringing up the shadows will reduce the contrast. And I continue improving this by raising the blacks as well. And the black slider is also more powerful than the shadow slider, as you can see, in reducing the overall contrast. I think this point right here looks quite good so far. Looking at the histogram, you can see it's nicely spread, but we still have a bit of room right here for the brightest parts. I do want to make use of it and that's the reason for me to bring up the whites. Of course this will bring back some contrast, but it's important to have some kind of bright area in this image which emanates that glow effect. We can further tweak the contrast situation by just bringing down the contrast. It really comes down to personal preferences. We could drop it a lot more and make the Orton Glow effect a lot stronger this way. But I don't want to go too crazy, I kind of want to keep a more natural look for this shot. So let's go with something around negative 14. Looking pretty good so far, we can compare this to the original RAW file real quick. You can see exposure wise it's looking much much better with all the details in the sky. And we already have some subtle glow effect going on. So let's work on that some more. To start this, I'm going to increase the texture. This will mainly make those smaller details like leaves and stuff a little bit sharper. Now for the autumn glow, all we have to do is bring down the clarity. And again, this comes down to personal preferences. You can go as far as you want. But of course, bringing it further down will make the glow effect stronger. And besides the clarity, we also want to drop the dehaze. And negative dehaze is really what makes this Orton Glow work, as you can see. Keep in mind, the further you bring down the dehaze, the brighter the image will get, and that just means you might have to manually adjust the exposure afterwards. So this right here is way too much. I, as I said, I want to keep it subtle. So let's say something around here, maybe. It looks great. And finally, I do want to bring up the vibrance just so we do have a nicely saturated image. All right, that looks great. Again, let's compare to the original RAW file and you can already see a quite nice looking glow effect, which we have achieved by using just a bunch of sliders in Lightroom. So you see, you don't necessarily need a plugin or Photoshop for that. However, we can further improve that by working on this image locally. That means we need to make use of masks. Let's jump into the masking panel. I want this whole image to look a little more grim. 
So what I want to do is to make the top part of the sky darker. So let's create a linear gradient like this. I'm trying to not affect the bright area right there too much, but this is looking good. Of course, I don't want to make those shadows in the landscape darker. This means I need to get rid of the mask on this area. And I can do that by going on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose sky. So here we get a pretty good selection. What I want to do next is to simply bring down the exposure. Okay, that looks good to me. Now for the extra glow, I'm going to use a radial gradient for that. And what I want to do is to create a rather long and thin radial gradient like this, rotate it a bit, and it's important I'm placing it over the brightest area in the sky, and I'm also making sure it's overlapping something in the foreground like those trees. And the reason for me to do that is I want to increase the blacks, which will affect the shadows in there. And you can see how this will create this very cool glow effect, which fits the scene quite well and just improves the autumn glow. Again, we can make use of negative dehaze as well to make this effect stronger. So let's do this. Wonderful. Again, you can see how just one minor adjustment makes this whole effect pop a lot more. Now I want to emphasize the center of the image a little more. This means I want to make the foreground darker since it's a little distracting. So let's create another linear gradient, just going over the foreground like this. And I'm going to drop the exposure. Looking all good so far, but I don't like how the water looks in here. So what I want to do next is to say subtract, choose the brush, and I'm just going to brush over the water. Perfect. Let's maybe raise the exposure just a little bit to not make it too dark. But I think that is looking very good. Okay, then we can further work on the center using another radial gradient. Just creating one like this. And what I want to do with this is to just bring up the exposure. And making this area brighter will give this area more attention when viewing the image. So let's see, at this point the sky is starting to get a bit too bright. So I'm again using a linear gradient for the top part, just like that. And again, I'm just dropping the exposure. Perfect. Finally, I kind of want to dodge a few areas of this image, mainly the bright green tones right there in the foreground. So we can do that rather easily using a color range mask. And with the color range mask active, I'm just clicking right there in the green area. You can see how this will create a very good selection. So all that's left to do now is to bring up the exposure. Perfect. And I think that's already it for the masking part. So again, let's compare the before and after view. At this point, you can very clearly see the Orton Glow effect, which we added using just Lightroom. I do want to make it clear one more time that we don't necessarily need Photoshop for this effect. You just need the right image to do this. So next up, we can also do a little bit of color grading before we can finish the shot. So let's head into the HSL panel. I do have a feeling that green color tones are a little too saturated, so I want to bring down the green saturation a notch. That should be about it. And I also want to apply a little bit of split toning in the color grading panel. I don't want to target the highlights because I think they look good. I do want to target the midtones and the shadows. So for the midtones, let's set up the hue. I do think a warmer hue works quite well on the midtones. However, I'm going to only use a very low amount of saturation to keep it subtle. All right, and I'm going to head into the shadows. Here we want to apply a cold color tone because this just fits the scene the best. And again, I'm using only a very low amount of saturation here. Perfect. All right, almost done. Now I do think I want to add some vignetting so you can find that in the effects panel right there. Just bring down the amount. Wonderful. One more thing we can do with the colors is in the calibration tab. You just want to bring up the blue primary saturation, which will affect this image in a very nice way. Perfect. So I guess the very last thing we can do is the sharpening in the details tab. So as always, I'm using the same settings for every image I'm sharpening. 
bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the Alt key so you can see which area will get sharpened, and then just bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the finished image. So as you can see, this was very, very easy to do. I hope this was also understandable. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this tutorial.